Welcome to the Possibility Mom Live. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you an exciting new professional announcement. I am now the new president of the Guiding Star Project, a sisterhood of life-affirming healthcare across the United States. And I'm going to share with you how this impacts my coaching business, how this um, impacts my life, (laughs) and what corporations can learn from entrepreneurs. That's what's coming up today on the Possibility Mom Live. Over on my Instagram and to my email list, I made this fun announcement, I guess last week or earlier this week, earlier this week, I made the announcement and it has been such a joy to uh, receive your feedback, to receive your text messages of support, your DMs, your emails. I am so, so grateful. So I am now the new president of the Guiding Star Project. What is the Guiding Star Project? It is a, uh, we have eight centers in the United States and it's life-affirming healthcare, beautiful uh, spaces where women can go to get their um, fertility, their breastfeeding, their birth support, um, their post-birth support, all around empowering women to view their bodies as natural and good, nothing wrong with them, all the things. And as I was sharing with my email list earlier this week, it's been interesting to reflect on my journey as an entrepreneur and how I got to this place today. So today I'm going to just share a bunch of thoughts around what corporations can learn from entrepreneurs. I'm going to answer a lot of questions that came in to my DMs, including, did I do this for the money? (laughs) Am I giving up on entrepreneurship? How could you do this if you love entrepreneurship so much? What happened? So these have been some interesting questions that I've gotten in my DMs. And so we're going to tackle all of that today. I'm so excited to do that with you. Before we get into that, check this out. It's Lisa Canning, the Possibility Mom, coming at you from downtown Toronto, which is going to be the site of Wealth Without Guilt Live 2023 the conference to attend for the Catholic mom who is pursuing holiness in both business and in motherhood. This is the conference to attend if you're looking to serve God with your business, trust God with your business, and build a profitable business that will contribute to a thriving Catholic economy. Tickets are available both in person here in Toronto and online. And to grab your ticket, just click the button below. So. Wealth Without Guilt Live, my first in-person business conference is happening in 19 days. Oh my word, 19 days. We are gathering at beautiful Kintour College in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And I want to encourage you to grab your in-person ticket if you're able to travel. If you're not able to travel, grab your virtual ticket. You do not want to miss this conference. Honestly, we just confirmed all of the like all the details on the agenda. We have some incredible virtual and in-person speakers who are going to be coming. Aaron Ingold, my dear dear friend and mindset coach, Laura Roland who I had recently on the podcast. Did I have her on the podcast recently? How she had not come yet. Anyway, oh my gosh, we have to correct that if she hasn't been on the podcast. I've done so many um, videos with her lately that I, I can't remember if she's actually been on or not. She is an M code coach. This M code motivation code has hugely changed how I view myself um, and my ability to be productive. We're going to be having uh, Virginia Braun talking about profit, how to run a profitable business. Stephanie Donahue, my business partner in my mastermind, she's going to be talking about why the Catholic economy needs you. Jessica Castillo is going to be talking about the roadmap for a Catholic entrepreneur, how to not lose your mind, your sanity, your health, 
um, all the things when you are an entrepreneur, and many, many more. Kathleen LeBlanc and her husband Jesse are going to be doing music for the event and going to be leading us in a beautiful evening of praise um, and surrender to the Holy Spirit. Claudine Noel is going to be helping us out with some central nervous regulation and my own internal family systems therapist. Like, I'm so excited that you all get to meet her, either in person or virtually, Virginia Charlesworth. She has really transformed my life. And I just, gosh, she's really, really, really helped me in so many ways. And so those are some of the women that you are going to hear from, plus a few more surprises. I'm pretty sure that there are a few more few more surprises that I'm going to just sneak in there for you to enjoy. So you can grab your ticket in person in Toronto or virtual at the possibilitymomconference.com slash 2023. I would love to see you there. So I shared a little bit about the Guiding Star Project. We provide life-affirming health care in the United States with a focus on a woman's natural body, that there is nothing wrong with your body and anything that would suppress or change a woman's natural body is not health care. And I've been reflecting as we were preparing the um, emails for this announcement. I've actually been in the job for a few months now, just quietly working in the background. And I've been in the organization for even longer than that. So I'll share that with you in a little bit. But it's been really interesting to reflect on the different hats I've worn. In 2007, I started um, my career as an interior designer uh, on HGTV. And then I transitioned to helping families across the United States and Canada design homes that would help their families thrive at home. And then I went from designing people's homes to designing people's lives as I wrote my book, The Possibility Mom, and then started my life coaching and business coaching business later on. And, uh, you know, it's been I, 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 when the Spice Girls came out. And this whole like girl power, you know, when their movie came out, just this, this, I, I used the Spice Girls, I'm 39. So Spice Girls was very popular. They were very popular at a very formative time. You know, they say that the music you listen to, if I'm not mistaken, around the age of like 12 or 14, like there's something about um, that period being very influential on your life. I don't ask me any more about that. I, I think I heard that from of an episode of Criminal Minds, so somebody else fact check that. But <laughs> the Spice Girls were deeply influential in my life with this whole thing about girl power, okay? But as I've been reflecting on my empowerment and this girl power type of brand of empowerment that was very, very popular in the late 90s, early 2000s, my definition of empowerment has always been tied to fertility. And so it honestly just made so much sense <laughs> that I got involved with the Guiding Star Project that that is their goal is empowerment around a woman's fertility baked into their core values like right on the website if you were to go on the website right now you will see there is a line that literally says that children and fertility should not, like we believe at the Guiding Star Project, that children, fertility, should not force a woman to choose between her career or her personal pursuits. I mean, how possibility mom is that? And so as I was discerning this decision, I mean, it was a big discernment. Like this is a big, I'm very honored to be in this role. I am the president of an organization that has, you know, combined between all of our centers. I don't know how many, how many staff are there. Lots. <laughs> There's a lot of staff there. I manage a team and, you know, all the things. We have a board of directors. We have hundreds of people who donate to the cause. It is a very, um, I take it very seriously. The, 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 what the gift I've been given, like I, I hold it very precious. 
But what I've sort of heard the Lord whisper in my ear has been very much this notion of this is what I've been preparing you for. Your interior design experience, your um, life coaching experience, business coaching experience, all the things I've done through um, January Donovan and the woman's school, the wholeness school now, all of my work as a certified coach through Metanoia Catholic, um, my interior design experience, creating spaces for families to thrive, just all of this. And my media experience, my like 15 plus years of broadcast experience, being able to talk into a camera like this. All of that is what I've sort of felt the Lord has been saying, not so quietly in my ear, but this is what I've been preparing you for. So I am thrilled. I am excited. It's what I think the world needs. I'm currently in Canada running a massive organization in the United States, which I will chuckle with the Lord about one day. I do have some not so secret hopes to maybe bring this to Canada also. So stay tuned for that. But for now, our mission is to increase the Guiding Star reach to the 50 beautiful United States, a center in each beautiful United States. Um, what's my interest in the United States? I was in Ave Maria, Florida for three years. I love America. I love my home and native land too, but I love America and I am so grateful to be in this role. I think there are a lot of things that corporations can learn from entrepreneurs. And so I'm gonna highlight some of those ways, some of the things that uh, corporations, and not that Guiding Star Project is like a big corporation, if I'm being honest. Like it is, it is, a, and it's it's not like a formal corporate, uh, it's a very casual culture, I would say, or very familial culture. We at head office do not have a centralized office. It's all, we're all remote. We're all over. Um, I'm the first Canadian, but all over the United States or all the other staff. Um, we have uh, centers in Iowa, in Minnesota, in Texas, um, uh, Tennessee. Oh, gosh, I'm missing Florida. I'm missing, I'm definitely missing one. Forgive me, everybody. I'm definitely missing one state. Forgive me, oh my word, I'm for, I'm missing one state and I'm so sorry. Anyways, we are across the nation and more to come. Um, I've been in the organization long, but not long enough to have some of these things like really memorized yet. Um, but I am, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, really excited. So I want to share where I think corporations can learn from entrepreneurs by way of answering some of your questions. And if you have questions live about my role at the Guiding Star or about the Guiding Star Project in general, please feel free. Thank you so much for your comments here on Facebook. Such a beautiful mission. And then Romilda, thank you so much for the congratulations. Okay, so some of the questions that have come in have been very, very awesome and very, very honest, and I appreciate them so, so much. And so I'm going to tackle them and also address how corporations can learn from entrepreneurs based on these questions. So number one, did I do this for the money? Okay. So this one made me chuckle for two reasons. Number one, it made me chuckle because I have definitely thought when I have seen other entrepreneurs, so other sort of like, um, you know, like just like people who were in a creative field, let's say, and then they got hired by like a major national retailer or people who were coaching, like, let's just say like on their own, and then they joined a massive entity. I'm not going to lie. I, of course, have also thought the question, oh, I wonder what happened. Like, I wonder what happened. And if I'm being really honest in the past, I've definitely thought like, it must be something bad. <laughs> it must be something bad. Something bad must have happened that they turned to a more corporate gig. So I, I, I regret to inform that I definitely had this bias in the past. And so it's been interesting to view some of your very honest questions. And my inference is that some people are thinking something along the lines, maybe, similar. And where it comes to is, did you do this for the money? So um, it made me chuckle for that first piece because I definitely thought that in the past. I don't really think that anymore. Like when I see other people who maybe make moves either, either way, like from corporate to entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship to corporate, I don't know. I just, I don't, I just 
I don't really have thoughts anymore about that. I'm not really sure why. I think it's just it's such changing times um, where people, especially with when COVID hit and people became so much more flexible, like I kind of just... I don't even, it doesn't, those thoughts don't even come into my brain anymore. They came into my brain a lot when I was younger. Um, To be frank, it's probably because I just don't even have time to think (laughs) these kinds of thoughts anymore. But that, that, so it made me chuckle because I was like, okay, I get it. I definitely had thoughts like that. What happened? You know, this must have been about the money, whatever. Okay. But then the second piece that made me chuckle was, did I do this for the money? Oh, we are a charity. (laughs) We are a charity. And you can, you know, like we, we charities publish their um, 990s, they're called like you can look up what um, different people have made in the past uh, via a charity. And it's very interesting. It's very fascinating. So, I mean, is it is it? It, 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 like it, I'm not, there's an honest part of it. Like there is a difference when you are working for a corporation that has a large bank account and someone's processing your payroll, right? There definitely is a, um, an ease, let's call it that comes with that. You know, that a certain amount is coming to into your account every single month, but it is, uh, a charity. So meaning <laughs> it's not like we're, it's, it's a charity. There is, and and here's what I want to say about that too. I think some people do think that when you are working in a job that you are, you're on a fix, like when you're in a corporate kind of entity, you're on a fixed income, meaning there's not a lot of room for growth. And so this is one of the things that I think corporations can learn from entrepreneurs. What if that doesn't have to be the case? And I know this might sound a little bit maybe naive or like pie in the sky or aspirational, but what I'm bringing to the guiding star is 100% an entrepreneurial approach, a scrappiness, if you will. The word scrappy sometimes triggers people, but a scrappiness, like how in my own business, I'm often thinking about how can I increase my revenue every single month? How can I do better than the last month? You better believe I'm bringing that exact same competitive advantage, if you want to call it, or entrepreneurial gusto to this charity. I'm constantly thinking about how can we improve things? How can we get donations up? What can we do to increase the reach and visibility of this charity in the exact same way that I do that for my business? So I I think it's an interesting... I don't want... Is misnomer the right word? Like, like I, I, It's just an interesting thing that um, I think people can assume sometimes, and maybe there's some truth to it that you can, there's an ease in which money is just landing in your bank account somewhat miraculously, you know, every single month. But I really think there is scrappiness and a hunger, let's call it for growth that corporations can definitely learn from entrepreneurs. So did I do this for the money? The short answer is no. <laughs> Although there is a lovely benefit, and I'm very, very, very grateful for it, uh, of uh, a a steadiness that comes with a more corporate kind of position. Um, But no. So why did I do it? So that's the next question. Why did I take this job? And I took this job because I care about impact. I mentioned January Donovan and the Woman's School, which now goes by the Wholeness School. And I got involved in her organization back in 2019. I became a strategist, actually 2020. I signed my paperwork on on January 17th, my husband's birthday, 2020th. And one of the exercises she has people do is to write out a series of scripts that illustrates your dream life, illustrates a really big dream. And at the top of my little page, like my, 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 my scripting, my, my, I think, I believe the term that she used uh, at the time was power scripting was that I will impact a million women. And I always thought I would do that via my entrepreneurial efforts. Like I just was like, I'm definitely not going to do that at Starbucks. I have a likelihood of doing that in my coaching 
and in my online programs. And it was very clear to me, a million women, like very, very, very clear. Um, and then I had some other benchmarks, like a hundred thousand women I've worked with in some capacity. So like via, um, a course or a free program, for example, or what have you. And then I had another benchmark under that, like 10,000 women I've maybe coached really personally in a more higher level thing. So anyways, but million women was always a number. And that is always what I've been working towards. Every time you look at any kind of goal sheet, um, any type of vision casting, everything has always been around this sort of three-year, five-year, 10-year plus plan of a million women. And so when I started to get to know the Guiding Star Project, and I just started to look at the capacity, when you have a center in every United State, that's a lot of potential for impact. And again, as I've been reflecting that so much of empowerment for me is based around female fertility, the ability to bring life carry life, conceive life, and care for it with your body, with your arms, with milk that comes from your breasts, with your nurturing, with your tenderness, with your skills, with your mindset, with all the things. I was like, that is so aligned with what I want to do. I have known the founder, Leah Jacobson. She actually came in to my life via the woman's school in 2020. So she was one of my life coaching clients. And I had the wonderful opportunity to get inside her brain a little bit at that time. She was writing her book, Holistic Feminism, at the time that I was coaching her in a group setting. And it was COVID. She was navigating what COVID was doing to her charity, obviously, and all the things. And then we stayed in touch over the years. Uh, She hired me to do some interior design work for the Guiding Star Project, which was really fun. I was um, so honored to create a brand guide that uh, centers now use as they're going through, you know, their paint selections and their flooring selections and all that kind of stuff. And then when I became a certified mindset coach through Matanoia Catholic, I reached back out again and I just said, hey, you know, I've got this sort of new tool under my belt. Um, What are you, what are you, what are you doing for coaching right now? Like, would this be helpful to you? And she was like, this is actually perfect timing. Let's go. And then you know, the business coach in me can't really turn off, right? So she would be talking about things. And then I I would just be like, you know, there's like a pretty simple fix to that. Like you could just try this. And I think that would increase your numbers. Try this and that would increase your email list and, and so on and so forth. And then she was like, okay, listen, I know you got your own thing going on. And we were in a period of incredible transition. And she just was like, can you just like come in and actually do the stuff that you've been talking about? Like do the stuff that you've been coaching on, but just do it. Like just do it. And she was like three months, just three months, just three months. And then you can go back to doing everything else. And so it's not in the past. It has not been uncommon for me to work one-on-one with clients. Like I've worked with um, several uh, female influencers, fellow coaches, um, different entities, like different organizations in a contract capacity like that. Um, I, uh, so it was not foreign to me to be very invested in somebody's company like that for a period of time. And so I was like, okay, listen, you've got three months, but then I've got like another book to write. I've got this, I've got that. I want to do a conference. Like I just was like, I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm excited about doing. So, you know, you've got me for three months only. But when I put my marketing hat on, I ask a lot of questions. Like, I can't help it. I have to understand how to market a company. If For me to market a company really well, I have to really understand it. And so I just started asking all kinds of questions, and I felt terrible. I kept saying things like, guys, I'm so sorry. I know you did not hire me, like, to ask these kinds of questions. Like, you hired me as a marketer, but I can't not see some of the things, and they will impact how I do my job, and so on and so forth. And so I just kept asking all these really, I would say, kind of hard questions. Like, clarify this to me. Why do we do this this way? Yada, 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 yada. And then it just sort of evolved. (laughs) It just sort of evolved. Like, it evolved to this just... 
I don't even know what you want to call it. Like just it, my, my, my role in the organization just continued to evolve. And then the conversation just naturally led its way to, would you ever consider coming in to a much more permanent role? And it's been interesting because um, I've learned the legalities of, you know, how you work with people as a contractor versus an employee. And so um, based on legal, you know, like legal ramifications. And if I'm not mistaken, this is, I know this is U S law too, or is it Canadian law? I can't remember, but one of the countries has very strict rules around it, probably both what a contractor can do and what an employee can do. And it was just, you know, very clear that this would be an employee position, um, and where the title of president would, would simply make sense. And so why did I take this job in short? It's impact. And because it really, like, I just kept asking questions. I just kept asking questions. <laughs> and it's it, so this kind of a role where I'm looking at the strategic effort of an entire organization is just very well suited to my hardwiring, the way that God made me. And so that has been a really, really fun thing. So what can corporations learn from entrepreneurs in this way is to pay attention to everyone. Like my recommendation is to pay attention to everyone and allow for this kind of conversation. Allow for people who might not be in the role that they were hired for. And of course, there has to be some um, healthy parameters around this. Like we don't want everybody talking about how everybody's doing their jobs. Obviously, there's sort of a like a healthy way to do this where it makes sense, appropriate containers. But that's what I'm trying to argue here is create the appropriate containers where employees do feel like I can voice my concerns, questions, suggestions to the organization as a whole, and that they will be taken seriously. All right. The next question that I've been getting is what will happen to your coaching business? Well, here's the really cool thing is that Leah Jacobson is very supportive. The founder of the Guiding Star Project is very, very supportive of my coaching business and me continuing to do all the things that I'm doing, my speaking, my events. Um, and, and essentially, nothing really is going to change. All of my business coaching, so Wealth Without Guilt, the mastermind that I run, with Stephanie Donahue, the coaching level of my membership, the academy level of my membership, all of that is not changing. And I've been in the role, like I said, sort of quietly for a few months. Uh, and so I, it's just been, it's been going, going beautifully. Some of my motherhood coaching type of content uh, will be moving over to the Guiding Star Project in some capacity. So some some details to come on that. So meaning I am going to utilize my coaching skills in some capacity within the Guiding Star as well. Um, and so that would be a bit of a change to my motherhood without guilt experience, which is general life coaching um, for moms. And so there will be just some small changes on that and more to come. Uh, those details are still being worked out at time of recording. But essentially, I'm going to continue to be an entrepreneur. And here's what I would say to corporations. You want your employees to be happy and healthy and whole. And what do I mean by that? I think corporations, and of course, everything has to be done within, like I'm not saying that every organization can have uh, a, a, a disposition or an attitude or a policy around their employees doing things on the side, right? I can imagine lots of conflicts of interest, <laughs> lots and lots and lots of conflicts of interest up here. So just to be very, very transparent, um, this would, you know, there a lot of discernment would have to happen here. But I guess what I would love to encourage corporations to consider is happy employees who are doing things that they love are going to serve you better in the long term. And so if there are ways where it's not even, the, the word accommodation I don't think is accurate. Like it's not accommodations, but just, I'll give you an example. I remember in my husband, one of my husband's roles, they allowed him five hours of paid time 
to pursue a specific passion project because they saw how it would um, impact the organization and impact his ability to do his job. And I just was like, that's amazing. So it was very formal. Like you have five hours a week of paid time on our dollar to pursue this other somewhat related, but not really related thing. Like, and it was very strategic that they let him do that. So look at how can your employees be as happy and healthy as possible. Okay. The next question that has been so interesting to me is, is it more or less mental load than entrepreneurship? And I personally think this is not an unreasonable assumption. Like, like some people have been saying, oh, the mental load of entrepreneurship is so heavy. You know, this must be so much lighter. And I, I, you know, I probably have to reflect on this a little bit more, like meaning, is it my role, for example, that I don't see any difference, to be very frank, or minimal difference, minimal difference. So for example, one of the differences that I have as an entrepreneur versus a corporation is, for example, my credit card is tied to a lot of things in my own business my personal credit card or my business credit card, right? So for example, some of you might remember I was running a really big promotion at the end of 2022 and beginning of 2023. And a credit card, one of my personal cards had expired and I didn't catch it and I didn't catch all the notifications around the expiration. And so my domain, like literally lisacanning.ca, um, did not work. It ceased to work. And so we were running ads. We were like promoting the heck out of this, this thing. And there was no website. Like there was, my website was completely down out for the count because I had missed that very crucial detail of my credit card expiring and therefore the payment not going through for my domain. Whereas in a corporation, (laughs) there's somebody else worrying about that. You know what I mean? Like there's not as much like uh, there's a there's a corporate credit card. Like it's just a little different. Right. So there are certain things where, yeah, like I don't think about things like that compared to my own personal business where I'm the one who started all the cards and signed them all in the beginning. But I would say that this is what I think entrepreneurs can bring to corporations you want to hire somebody who's going to care as much about your corporation as they would as if their name was on the door. To me, that just like makes so much sense. Do you know what I mean? It's like, as much as I want to say, oh yeah, I don't think about the Guiding Star like at night. I 100% think about the Guiding Star project like all the time. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, and in not in a, sometimes it's unhealthy, obviously, right? It can be very unhealthy. But I, I just, I come back to that sentence I just said a moment ago. I think corporations would be so served to look at how entrepreneurs almost obsessively think about their businesses. And how do you cultivate that same buy-in? And that's that's really the thing that I want to invite and inspire and invigorate and galvanize anybody who touches the Guiding Star Project to just get excited, to be bought in, to feel like they have a part, to like, like a part, they own a part of this mission. They own a part of changing the definition, so to speak, of feminism today and what healthcare looks like, what a holistic feminist healthcare practice looks like? What does it look like for care to be administered to women that makes them feel empowered? So it's an interesting question. Is it more or less mental load than entrepreneurship? I would say not really. Like I would say I still think about, worry about, um, ask the Lord for tons of help on in the exact same way as I do you know, in my entrepreneurial pursuits and that in a healthy way, like meaning this, I'm not trying to say 
Um, you know, this is also a, a recipe for burnout if we're not careful in corporations, but I would say in a very healthy way, this can be an asset to a corporation. Alrighty. And then the final question that I've been getting asked a lot is how on earth are you doing this with nine kids and the fact that you're houseless? We're still houseless. I'm not homeless. I'm houseless. My spiritual director keeps reminding me you're not houseless. You will always have a home because home is where your family is. It doesn't matter where they are. It's where your family is. Um, but we are still houseless, uh, meaning that we are still looking for more permanent long-term housing in the Peterborough area where we have resettled, relocated, uh, and where my children are going to school. We are at time of recording, second week into school. We were in a rental for the first week, and now we are in a, um, through the generosity of people, uh, just an incredible family came forward and were like, please just use our home. So that's just like, ugh. Um, it's not a permanent solution uh, because of different factors. So we will still have to kind of um, uh, vacate at certain points, but it does allow us uh, a bit of time to be in a space and continue to look for that more permanent space. Anyways, I'm going to do a whole other podcast episode. I'm kind of joking because I'm not really, but like, I just, I am now an expert at looking for a rental for nine kids and then getting rejected for that rental <laughs> because of the number of kids you have. I'm like kind of expert at that now. I'm kind of expert at managing my mind through that really epic disappointment. But anyways, I'm being playful, but I'm also not. It's really sad sometimes. Um, but uh, my point in sharing this is how am I doing this with nine kids? Well, I have a fun thing to tell you. I am going to share with you exactly how I'm doing it. I am doing it by following some of the tools that I have leaned on and I have taught to many of my women in my life coaching business. And that is my time management course, Conquer Your Calendar. Conquer Your Calendar is something I developed right after my minivan meltdown when I had it was experiencing a really, really challenging time in my life where my marriage was falling apart, where my health was tanking, where I hardly ever saw my children. And I realized that something really big had to change. And a part of that change, it was a necessity that I look at how I spent my time because I was working around the clock and I knew that I couldn't work around the clock anymore if I wanted my marriage to remain intact and I wanted to have some semblance of adrenal, um, adrenal health, right? So I developed Conquer Your Calendar several years ago. It continues to be one of my most popular pieces of content. And I've decided to do something kind of fun. And that is to offer it for three days. So for, uh, what is that? For 72 hours, you will gain access to Conquer Your Calendar completely for free. This is your opportunity to learn literally how I do it. When people ask me, how do you do it? I'm, I often say, read my book because I give you a pretty decent playbook in there. And then if you want a little bit more in depth, conquer your calendar is the course to start with. This course is like, well, I, I created it, I created it before my book. And so I would sometimes refer to my book as my eighth baby or my seventh baby, depending on what time, because uh, I had two babies in the process of writing that book. And so I often would, you know, sort of describe this one as my my sixth child. I think in, in Conquer Your Calendar, I talk about having, like, I think I had six kids at the time. So you hear me talk about six kids. But anyway, I digress. You can join me inside of Conquer Your Calendar, where you're going to gain access to that course, where I describe how you identify your priorities, how you then make appointments in your calendar to capture those priorities. And then I am going to be live all those three days, September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern to answer your questions and to walk with you and to cheer you on. But you get completely free access to this course. It is normally $297. Like, who doesn't want it for free? And I just promise you, even if you did one day of it, like even if you did the first module, you would gain so much clarity around your life. And so this fun opportunity to do this completely for free, you can go to learn.thepossibilitymom.com slash CYC free. And I want to encourage you 
to join me completely for free and gain access to Conquer Your Calendar. It's going to be so much fun. I love doing things in these little cohorts like this, like live little sprints, um, because there's strength in numbers and you will be cheered on. And there's a bit of an, a, you know, like a time limit, right? So sometimes a time limit is just very healthy and, and um, helpful. You're, you're kind of focused on getting something done because you know you only have access to it for three days. So... I really hope you'll join me for it. It's going to be a really great time. And, and so here's the final thing I want to share that I think entrepreneurs can offer to corporations. And that is flexibility and a, like a flexible approach to time. That's what I, how I want to word it. I think entrepreneurs, by the necessity of their, you know, um, lives <laughs> need to be very flexible and dexterous. And sometimes, you know, you get interrupted, especially when you're working from home as an entrepreneur um, and all the things. I think entrepreneurs can offer corporations a very flexible way at looking at life and work. Now, I think COVID has done that as well. Like many corporations are now understanding that, you know what, it's possible to do things in between laundry. Do you know what I mean? It's possible to do things very efficiently when we cut out some of the like, some, you know, things that maybe some of the chit chat, some of the just things that come with a more corporate environment. Um, there are so many benefits I think that entrepreneurs can bring to corporations. I want to invite you to learn more about the Guiding Star Project. Visit our website, theguidingstarproject.com. And I want to invite you, if you're watching this on YouTube, sorry, correction, guidingstarproject.com, <laughs> guidingstarproject.com, visit our website to learn more about the charity about the the system of uh, sisterhood of healthcare centers you can look up where there is a center close to you and you can uh, join us in our mission of redefining what it looks like in a post row world to have healthcare that affirms women my big desire it's not so secret and it's sort of selfish but not really is I would love it if anybody who gets pregnant, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the case, no matter how it happened, that they feel not afraid to have that baby. And I mean that from every way possible, meaning that they're not afraid. Like, for example, I know some women who struggle with just debilitating um, nausea and debilitating challenges when they are pregnant. I want those women to not be afraid because they know where to access the kind of care that's going to help them, both from the physical but also from the mental point of view. I want all women to feel like even if they're exhausted every single day, even if they have a bunch of small kids at home that are you know, needing them every second, that they can find support through a coach, through mental health services through courses, through some of the things that I've been developing over the last 15 years, I want to give that to women so that they feel like they can do it. And then, of course, I want women to feel not afraid to give birth because they know that they can have an amazing, powerful, empowering birth experience. That birth does not have to be scary, that it does not have to be traumatic, that it does not have to be... Um, not inclusive, you know, it can be inclusive of their desires and their preferences around the way that they give birth. And then, of course, I want women to feel so supported. My goal for Guiding Star is that it becomes the village that you've always wanted. And again, both in the physical way, meaning there's a place you can go and you can get supplies if you need it. There's a place you can go and connect with other moms ahead of you on the journey and talk about, gosh, like this is really hard. Like this part of mothering is very, very, very difficult, you know, both from a physical and from just a practical straight up life coaching point of view. I don't know how to bathe the baby. I don't know how 
to um, cook dinner while a baby is crying. Like all just these practical things that sometimes we 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 may we may have learned in a more multi generational living situation or in a community where more women did things together. But in today's modern society, we have lost that largely. We have lost that. And so I want Guiding Star Centers to become the village, the best village that you have ever seen. <laughs> and so I want to invite you to link arms with us in our mission of redefining feminism today. And um, as well as um, uh, right below this video, wherever you're watching it, I've created a, um, I've answered more of your questions. So if you want to learn more about the Guiding Star Project and um, meet me a little bit, if we're new to each other, if you're finding me here because of Guiding Star and we are new to each other, please, please, please click the link below this video where you can get to know me. I'm very, very grateful, everybody, for your support. It really does feel like this has been what I've been prepared to do. I'm so grateful to my team at the Guiding Star Project um, for welcome me, welcoming me with open arms and for um, all of our centers across the United States for the warm welcome. I just, we got work to do and I'm excited to do it. And I love a challenge and this one is a big one and I'm really, really just excited about it. Okay, my friends. So there you go. I now will be bringing to the podcast like different flavors, still such an emphasis on, um, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, what it looks like for a Catholic mom. None of that content is going anywhere. Um, next week up on the podcast, I've got a very special guest, uh, one of my mastermind members, and forgive me, I don't have it pulled up exactly, but we've got another incredible member of my mastermind is coming up to talk about their amazing business and what it's been like for them to be inside of the Wealth Without Guilt Mastermind. So the content's not going to change. You're just going to get an additional flavor you know, I'm just bringing in a little bit, like another another flavor to the pot of Possibility Mom fun. And this one around empowerment, around a woman's fertility. All right. Always in your corner, my friends. Until next time, we'll see you soon.